Welcome back everyone to Conan the Grammarian. On this channel we talk about all things English. Grammar, diction, punctuation, spelling, semantics, syntax. If it can be correct, incorrect, or corrected, Conan covers it. I am AJ. I'm Conan's spokesperson on this channel. And yes, there is a real Conan. But uh, we spell his name on this channel with a K, and we do that primarily for fun, but not entirely. This episode is called Ain't Is a Word. Did you ever hear the expression, ain't, ain't a word? I used to hear it all the time, especially when I was in high school and uh, my first years of university. What's worse, though, is that I believed it as well. And I couldn't have been more wrong. It's an inaccurate idea altogether. Actually, it's inaccurate in two ways. First, to say ain't ain't a word is actually to say ain't am not a word, because ain't means am not, in its original usage, that is. Secondly, ain't is a word. It's a perfectly good word, and if English is determined to continue using contractions, then ain't is both valid and important as a word. Thus saith Conan. Now, initially, historically, the word ain't was considered every bit as correct as any other contraction in English when properly used, that is. And its meaning, as I said, is am not. Over the first century of its use, beginning in the early 1700s, it retained that one limited meaning. But beginning in the early 19th century, the meaning of the word apparently began to either multiply or morph into all kinds of things that make little or no sense. Suddenly, ain't meant has not, have not, are not, and is not. In some places today, it's even used in place of words don't, doesn't, and didn't. When well-known writers like Charles Dickens popularized the use of the word ain't in all its incorrect applications during the mid-1800s, some meddling grammarian, the semantic equivalent of etiquette's Emily Post, I assume, in the ultimate linguistic example of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, banned the word ain't entirely from proper use. Oh, crap! Yes, that it's mad, tis true, tis true, tis pity, and pity tis, tis true. A foolish finding. Who was this eminent grammarian? I ain't sure, but neither are historians. It was ostensibly Queen Victoria herself, but we really don't know. I do know, however, that I am not amused by the word's absence. Rather than encouraging adherence to the correct usage, which should be no strain at all for any English speaker, we have been forced to make the ungrammatical grammatical all because someone messed things up for the rest of us. In the 1700s, we were able to confirm our own correctness on issues by asking either, am I not correct, or ain't I correct? Both constructions were considered correct for over a century, even while the wealthier classes only moderately accepted the correctness of contractions in England and the U.S., and the more impoverished of those in those countries seldom knew that contractions were available for use at all. But suddenly, because a word has been banished from use, we are forced to ask the same question this way. Aren't I correct? Now, it's not offensive to our ears, but that's only because we're used to hearing it. And if not that precise thought, at least that use of the idea of aren't. What we are saying in reality when we ask that question is, are I not correct? And that, you may already be aware, is about as bad as asking, is you correct or be I correct? Oh, crap! I don't know about you, but I would love to see that old word ain't carefully, cunningly, 
cautiously reintroduced into vernacular English, if for no other reason than to avoid being forced to be ungrammatical on the rare occasion when I'm obviously already doubting myself. Are I correct? I'll start by using ain't myself, as I already use other words that grammarians consider incorrect, such as the word disrespect used as a verb, not considered correct, and the word all right as one word, not considered correct. Since I'll be using ain't, I'll also encourage my students to use it, so long as they use it correctly to mean am not. Thus saith Conan. Mind you, it will sound incorrect for a time for all of us, but that's only because you're not used to hearing it. It sounds wrong to me, to be honest, but I know that I'm right on this one. But when other professors who share my students with me try to correct them regarding the word's use, my students can explain the word, its history, and its importance. As far as I'm concerned, ain't is a valid and necessary word. In any word whose use is both necessary and valid should be part of our proper grammar. And I'm right, ain't I? Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a like. Do it! Like us also on Facebook and soon on MeWe. Do it now! Please don't forget to subscribe. Just do it! And click that bell icon to get notifications of new episodes. Now! Feel invited and free to leave a comment, preferably a positive one, but if you have a clever witticism or a constructive criticism, feel free to share that as well. And please also share this video on other social media. I dare you to not share this video. Want you all to have a great day, a great couple of weeks. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.